Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Marriage. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today, we are diving into what to do when my husband is quiet. All right, let's dive in. All right, we're answering a question today that was sent in to us, and it says, how do you encourage a spouse to communicate and converse with you when they are naturally a quiet person? My husband seems to be withdrawing more and more into his silent state of being. He has finally admitted that he has that he might be depressed, no joke, and has started an antidepressant. I am hoping that this will help him to feel something for life again and maybe start to open up. He, wait... We have been married for almost 20 years, and he has always been pretty quiet when it comes to actual conversations on anything other than work and hunting. I asked him what his ideal dream vacation was last week, and he replied that his brain doesn't work that way. He doesn't know what it would be. I asked who would be there and what would make it more memorable. He said, I don't know. I have suggested going to counseling as I can, as I see a counselor already for my own depression and childhood abuse, but he said he didn't think he needed that and that it wouldn't. he wouldn't even know what to say anyway. I'm ready to put my head through a wall. Um, We have your app and we really like it, but he has never opened it. It's hard to work on improving your relationship when the partner won't even open the app. Mm, LOL. That is hard. hard. So I can understand how the wife feels here. And then also the last thing that came into my mind as I had a bunch of different thoughts Thoughts. was "Mm, this problem isn't the husband's problem. What do you mean? It is not a problem for him that he's quiet. Oh, right. It is not a problem for him not to think about a vacation. It's not a problem for him to not engage. So, oh my goodness, where, what do you do, right? Mm -hmm. If you're you're the spouse there. And in therapy and coaching, this is one of the most absolute difficult things to do. The problem won't be different for the person who either thinks they have it or their spouse thinks they have it. If they don't see it as a problem, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like people call us, they're like, "Oh, this," and I'm like, "Well, it's not really my problem." You, we have it has to be made their problem. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, but what does that mean? How does how do people do that? <sighs> mm, that means so I, I hmm, okay. Well, the guy said to talk about work and hunting. Uh, give me a call. I'll talk to you about hunting all day. <laughs> Open you up right there. And uh, I I would like to say I would like to give females maybe a different perspective on what a guy thinks. You mm-hmm. know, you like that that meme of the two people in bed. I bet he's thinking about other women. Right. The wife has a bubble, you know, and the guy's like, um, I don't know what kind of br- what kind of flour did they use in the bread of the pancakes right. this morning or right. something like that. Just something goofy. And I like to think of it this way: a guy's heart, a guy's mind can can really be a deep well, a deep well of thoughts and knowledge and stuff. But oftentimes, women may say or do things that don't tease that out mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and it's really goes back to that thing ask a better question get a better answer and right. you oftentimes say hey seth what are you thinking i'm like bloop, bloop, crickets right there's nothing going on mm-hmm. but when you get more specific about it then i can engage and have a really mm-hmm. cogent you know conversation right i i agree with you there that i think sometimes and maybe this is my interpretation of what you just said but sometimes um a spouse can almost make it harder mm-hmm. for an, their partner to engage because mm-hmm. of the questions that they're asking. So like, I would ask you all the time, what are you thinking? And what I was looking for was like, uh, I mean, I wasn't looking for anything deep. I wasn't mm-hmm. looking for like, well, the metaphysical blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I was just looking for like, oh, I really like that rainbow or I loved the dinner we ate last night or mm-hmm. I thought it was funny that the kids farted on the thing. Like I was looking right. for something, just whatever was in your head. Like just a commentary. Right. Like say something. Are you, th- are you thinking? Yeah. Are you alive? Do you have a heartbeat? <laughs> right. And I really didn't even care what it was that you were going to tell me. All uh-huh. I wanted to do was communicate and talk right. and connect. And, but you at some point were like, every time I would ask you, it got worse and worse and worse, like over years. Because here's the dynamic that happened. And our coaching clients have suffered through this as well. I want to talk to Melanie, I want to say things, but when she would ask certain lines of questioning, I would like make stuff up, not lie. Like right. I went to a donut store when I didn't or something like that, <laughs> but it, it felt feigned right. and you could tell. Well, like, it was like you're you were not looking engaging. for the answer I, you thought I was looking for. Right. Like you were like, what does she want me to tell uh, you or pretty? tell her? Yeah. Like stuff like that. I don't know. I was thinking about our wedding day. Like it, <laughs> it really was as if mm-hmm. I had sort of plopped you into a field with landmines. Mm-hmm. Every time I asked you, what are you thinking? And you're like, because then uh, it got to be a loaded question. Of right. Like, why don't you ever talk to me? Mm-hmm. What? You don't care. I'm like, no, I, I do care. But sometimes for my personality type or whatever, just how I think, wh- I'm not just thinking one solitary thing. I'm thinking of something, but to get to that point, 
I thought of 13 different things right. that I would have to explain. And it's, it's just so weird how men and women relate mm-hmm. in in that context, right? Like how we're different. How Well, yeah, how we're different, how we communicate, how we interpret what is said and what isn't said. So one thing that really helped us out is, drum roll, brrr, conversation starters. Right. Do you remember how awesome conversations... I guess I'm just doing the show No, by you're not. Right I'm trying now. to plug the thing in. Do you know how amazing conversation starters were? Well, we still do them, right? Right. But tell me about your experience of me when you would ask right. funny questions, engaging questions, well, and vice versa. And this is actually related to the app. So the person in the, the asking this question said, we have your app. Mm-hmm. My husband doesn't open it. So when we created the Anatomy of Marriage app, which if you don't have it, go to the app store and get it. It's Anatomy of Marriage. It's free. You can get a you can get a paid one for more things, but there are conversation starters, hundreds of conversation starters. And when we were creating the app, you and I did them together. We mm-hmm. created a bunch of them together out at a restaurant and we just sat there and talked. And it was really eye-opening for me because we've been in the marriage space for a long time. We've been doing well, this stuff. We've been stuff. married 17 years almost. Six, yeah. And, and it wasn't until we did that sort of practice of conversation starters mm-hmm. that were really fun and mm-hmm. different than normal that I was like, it's actually not hard to talk. Oh, <laughs> right. wow. News, news flash. It's not hard to talk. Because before I was asking you stupid questions and I was getting really hesitant, mm-hmm. uh, fearful answers from you. And I'm like, what's wrong with him? And then it became that he doesn't talk to me. He doesn't care about me. He right. doesn't know. But a lot of it was just simply not having easy questions to answer or um, stuff that didn't feel loaded or that it had an you know, it would be like if I asked you what you're thinking, you got to be like, oh, it's, it has to be about our family or else she'll get mad. Right. Right. And especially like with you and I running a business together. Right. Oftentimes our conversations would be, well, what about this? So and so did you, right. you know, respond back to those emails or somebody contact us on the app or, or whatnot. And it just become became a, a laundry list of right. to do's and like, hey, what are we going to do about this? And it was never well, it not it wasn't not never. But there was it was really heavy on being task oriented things. Right. So doing conversation starters through the app or just Google them or whatever. Right. Yeah. There's a million of them. It, it's like okay, let's chill. Mm-hmm. Let's chill. So the questions and the line of questionings aren't like you. You don't have to think a whole lot. Right. And I'm not saying that we don't go deep and things like that. But to answer a question and to have a low key mm-hmm. conversation is really, I find here's a here's an insight way more connecting than. Hey, what are we having for breakfast? You got to go to Costco. You got to mm-hmm. go to the grocery store. The dog barfed again. Kind of all these things. So it's it's way less task right. oriented. So I want you guys here take away this. Focus your questioning and how you guys conversate on things that aren't task oriented. They don't have to do with bills. They don't have to do with kids. They don't have to do with what's happening and not happening within the relationship. Just bring it down low key, and I'll mm-hmm. find that your husband probably or your wife, vice versa, will respond in a way that you uh, feel more connected when mm-hmm. you guys are when finished uh, talking. Right. Well, and I think, too, just the added benefit of having it feel... There's like a levity that comes when you're using an app or a deck of cards. What does cards, levity mean? Light? Like a lightness. Okay. Um, it doesn't feel as serious when you're just answering... Like you're flipping through a deck of cards and you're like, what's your dream vacation? It, mm-hmm. it feels like a funny, oh, it's a throwaway answer. Nobody really is. Mm-hmm. Nobody really cares. But that actually is the only objective that's what's fun about it is that it makes it feel lighter less like what is your dream vacation right. your answer matters a lot right now right because oftentimes we haven't been on vacation ever and right. it's now always it to go into, see your family right. or always where you want to go kind of thing and then it turns into an argument right. then it's a task list we didn't go here when i wanted to back in 1987 right. kind of thing and then you find yourself arguing over it and i've i have found that the times if so you've asked me questions from the card decks or right. from the app hey what do you think about where would you want to go if you had two weeks to do mm-hmm. anything you want to? Mm-hmm. So that gets me thinking, oh, man, what would I want to do? Would that be skiing or scuba diving or something we talked about once? Mm-hmm. And it's like you don't have to set it in stone. It's light. Right. And it feels yeah. so good. Yeah. And I think that that's the added benefit of just having some sort of tangible thing like online conversation starters or card decks or a book or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is, I think, a really great takeaway for how to engage with a partner who's naturally quiet I do think also sort of in line with that, that sometimes it's hard for like you didn't know what was serious and what wasn't. You didn't Mm -hmm. know what was lighthearted and what was not. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, if I can sort of couch it in like, this is a fun game, you're like, okay, it's fine. She's not going to yell at me at the end of this. It's not going to turn into a fight. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really, really important. Um, I do want to say in the question, it said, my husband, I think, 
so admitted he's depressed mm-hmm. and is going to start medication or whatever. Um, and there was a little bit of sarcasm in there, which I get it's frustrating, but I want to kind of encourage you to be really gentle. If your husband is legitimately dealing with sort of mental health issues or depression, even if it's sort of an acute, like one time thing mm-hmm. or whatever, that stuff can be really embarrassing to admit. And I know that mm-hmm. like when I admitted to having anxiety and depression, I was like, it felt so hard to say out loud like the and i'm a woman like i can emote much more mm. freely socially and culturally like it's not a bit a weird thing ah. but a man is not really allowed to do that in so our given that's, climate that's a good point like men masculinity and uh, the stigma around certain mental health issues that's a good point yeah and it's I a whole think, nother show right and i think what's hard about that is that women are like be like me. Say what I, you know, say what, say exactly what you feel. No. And men are like, I'm not going to do that. Right. I will be murdered for that. Oftentimes, we've done that before and gotten... Murdered for it. Murdered <laughs> Yes, <laughs> right. yeah. Metaphorically. Right. And so right. I think it's really hard because as, as maybe as the more emotive or communicative partner, maybe mm-hmm. not necessarily the female of the bunch, but if you're the, the more free communicator... Um, making your partner feel bad for not being openly communicative or feeling free mm-hmm. about expressing their feelings can also feel really shameful. Mm-hmm. Shaming and like um, push them farther away. Farther from away. You. And especially if this guy has predispositions to depression, mm-hmm. guess what? This is going to be chalked up as another thing that's overwhelming. Or that's wrong with oh me. Oh my goodness, or... I don't have the energy emotionally mm-hmm. uh, or, or sometimes spiritually to have these conversations. So... Keep it light. Be supportive. Be a soft place for your husband to land. Like oftentimes, I tell you that you are my soft place, Mm -hmm. that you're my medicine, you know, like physically medicine. Be that person for your husband Mm -hmm. because guess what? You don't want him going elsewhere and it probably, I know it does for you, it brings you joy to be that soft place for him, right? Mm -hmm. It brings you not purpose. I'm not saying that's your entire purpose but that is i believe really strongly that that's in your makeup Mm -hmm. to to be that person right right right. Mm -hmm. and i i equate it to parenting i know that sounds weird but like the way that you love your children as in your kid needs something they're sad they're whatever it's that same type of love and like in the greek there's like seven types of love which Mm -hmm. i want to do an episode all about that because not all love is like sex love right that's eros right um i think yeah, like erotic, oh, right, eros, right, right. and uh, but I think there's all these different types of love that people have, and we only express like two, like friendship, like agape or whatever, and then eros, which is Agape. like sex. <laughs> um, but I think that it's if we can look at it with that energy and have sort of a different mindset around like mm-hmm. what are we bringing to that relationship? If especially if one of our partners is quiet or suffering with anxiety or depression or anything else that feels really isolating and. Mm-hmm. It's hard to express how hard that is to be in that position of feeling isolated or not knowing how to talk about something. Because, I mean, I've had times where, like, I'll just be home and I'll be so sad. I can, Mm -hmm. and this is before I got onto medication, Mm -hmm. but I knew something was wrong. But I thought, I'll just like sort of white knuckle it and it I'll figure it out and it will be fine and I'll right. s- sort of strong arm my way through it and I'll in a week I'll be fine and in a week I was not uh. and it was so it felt awful cuz I had to like literally just hit to this point where mm-hmm. I'm like I hate everything like I have the best life ever right and I absolutely freaking hate everything mm-hmm. I need to go talk to somebody right and that was embarrassing it was shameful it was but who who was shaming you no one no one right who was embarrassed by you or for you no No one one. right so it was all your narrative that you had written around that so one thing that i didn't even plan to talk about is what is the narrative that we're saying around like mental health stuff around these stigmas around uh, like okay i can just white knuckle it or else but like newsflash a lot of guys feel a lot of guys currently are just white knuckling right, right right that that stress that anxiety that pressure that you felt i'll just white knuckle it as a mom or whatever it's like that's mm-hmm. what guys do right you know what i'm saying and we've talked about how i've done that before right. still i do it because just stuff has to get done but that's not bringing my best self to the table that's not maybe bringing your best self to the table right. either so let's be vulnerable let's talk about this stuff mm-hmm. and so number one support your husband or wife by asking really 
uh, light questions by ask. So ask better questions, get better answers. Mm -hmm. Use conversation starters. Use our app. Just Google conversation starters. Keep it light. Don't keep it task or task oriented. Number two, be curious. Be curious. Start off. Start off with your husband. Say, hey, we're just gonna talk. Not anything task oriented. I'm not gonna bash you here. Let's just talk. Okay, you up for it? Yeah. I doubt that that would work, that last one. But you don't I, think so? I love you. All right. Um, I think you're great <laughs> and wonderful. Thanks. But that last one probably won't work. <laughs> don't take that advice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think there is a lot. There's a bigger conversation happening here in this episode because it's not just about my partner won't talk to me. There's mm-hmm. something beneath that. And I will say, too, from my experience, when I got to places where I was really depressed or had anxiety, it's sort of like really married in my mind anxiety mm-hmm. and depression or like brother and sister in mm-hmm. my head and uh when i would get to those places i literally felt like i couldn't talk mm-hmm. i didn't know how like my mouth just disconnected from the rest of my brain mm. and so it was deeply frustrating to me to not be able to have the words when i can talk about anything you want to talk about like Dairy Queen for an hour? Let's go. Swirl. Swirl cone. Here we go. Episode number. Right. (laughs) Hot fudge Sunday. No nuts. Here we go. Uh, But I literally felt like my mouth didn't work Mm -hmm. when it came to talking about this deep sadness I felt. And Mm. I... I lost... I was at a loss for words at the the doctor's office when I went. I just cried. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the F is happening? Mm -hmm. I felt so screwed up and stupid and no, but nobody was saying Mm -hmm. you're dumb. You're screwed up. You're stupid. It was just my own narrative of, Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't, you know, be crying. I shouldn't whatever. And I really wasn't allowing for what was, I wasn't allowing that I was sad. I wasn't allowing that to be the case. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, in the act of fighting, it was, um, really, really challenging. So I want to kind of throw that out there that if you have a partner that, does kind of shut down and and doesn't talk and says maybe I'm depressed. Have a lot of grace for that. Have a lot of love and then talk to a, a doctor. Talk mm-hmm. to a therapist. Go get a counselor. Like yeah. this is actually a perfect time where we can plug Faithful Counseling. We partnered with Faithful Counseling and you can go to getfaithful.com forward slash anatomy of marriage and take their online quiz to get like signed up with a counselor mm-hmm. and you can find one that's like the gender you prefer, the mm-hmm. religion you prefer, the anything and it can be about depression or anything here's some therapy speak so when you go to getfaithful.com forward slash anatomy of marriage you'll be asked to fill out a very short and quick brief assessment hey what are some symptoms underwear assessment briefs assessment what about the <laughs> boxers assessment nope no, sorry came none on. of that getfaithful.com forward slash anatomy of marriage you answer a couple of questions they get you paired up like it's like okay you go to this box this box or this box based on when your answers they're going to pair you up so you don't have to retell your entire story again because mm-hmm. you've already checked that box, right? You can get a Christian counselor, non-Christian counselor, counselor, male, female. They deal with anxiety, depression, postpartum stuff, anything. When the you religions go to get, aren't only Christian or non-Christian. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Getfaithful.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get hooked up with a licensed counselor just like moi, and you can wear your J's. Don't worry about the corona still if you hadn't gotten the vaccine. Getfaithful.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. Right. I think that's a great resource for people. And that's mm-hmm. why we partnered with them, honestly. Like, do this from home and get the help that you need. That's right. Um, and thank you for sending in that question. If you have a question, you can send it in to hello at anatomyofmarriage.com. And we will look forward to answering it on our show. And if you're new to our show, welcome. We're glad hello. that you're here. <laughs> Check out our other shows, Anatomy of Sex and Anatomy of Family. Mm-hmm. We're doing fun things all over the internet and we're super excited about all the stuff that's coming up this year. Well, that's right. And uh, yeah, if you're also subscribed to the things and like them and leave comments and rate stuff. <laughs> what you know the- what you're supposed to do. I'm going to tell you like you don't know. It, it, it's like it's like the um, the voicemail that one of my uh, uh, people... <laughs> oh yeah, here's what we should say. Here we go. It's perfect. So you call this guy's voicemail, picks up, it's a recorded thing. He goes, I promise you, this is all he says, you know what to do and when to do it. Right. That's that all it. we should say. So you guys know what to do and when to do it. Click, now. <laughs> subscribe, email, hello at anatomyemerge.com. Click, <laughs> you know what to do and when to do it. <laughs> do it. All right. We love you guys. Have an all amazing right. day. We'll talk Bye. to you later. Bye. <laughs>